Hey guys, Respiratory Coach, got another video here for you. This one comes uh, via email um, from a young lady by the name of Yancey who's asked me to talk a little bit about NAVA. And if you're familiar with NAVA, then it probably means you work with the servo ventilators, uh, specifically the, the servo I's or the servo U's who have the NAVA edition on them. Now, NAVA stands for Neurally Adjusted ventilatory assist okay so it's a it's a um, I don't know how long it's been around but it's been a been around for for a little bit of time but it is definitely not one of your traditional modes of mechanical ventilation okay so what I'm gonna do is um, kind of talk a little bit about uh, what the what the uh, upsides to Nava are okay and then we'll talk about how it works and the things you need to know about it um, to be and to manage it as a respiratory therapist. So, so Nava's kind of claim to fame, cl claim to fame is this idea of enhancing patient ventilatory synchrony. Now, now this is important because if you've heard me on any of my other videos when I talk about mechanical ventilation, I have I've said it before and I'll say it again. Our jobs as respiratory therapists, it's to make the ventilator breathe like the patient not to force the patient to breathe like the ventilator okay when you do that the second of those two when you try to make the patient breathe like the ventilator you're setting yourself up for a long day of patient ventilator asynchrony and an extremely long day of vent alarms that are going to constantly be going off your patient's going to breath stack uh, they may air trap. Uh, they may just 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 bucking the vent all day long. Just a lot of unhappiness on your patient side. The ventilator never gets unhappy because the vent just does what it does. So the vent don't care, but the patient does. So anytime you can uh, implement a mode of mechanical ventilation that that breathes like your patient, then you're going to have better outcomes overall. Better blood gases. Better patient. Uh, ventilator synchrony which is going to lead to quicker weans and ultimately fewer ventilator days okay so so servos on to something here with nava if it, it enhances uh, patient ventilator synchrony then we got a good thing working here right so let's talk about how it works okay and you actually take a transesophageal uh, catheter and you insert it into the esophagus and you place that catheter at the level of the crura of the diaphragm, the crux of the diaphragm. There's two of them. So when you talk about two of them together, you call it the crura of the diaphragm. These are the two tendons that come off of the dome-shaped diaphragm and actually attach to the vertebral column. Now, the placement of this catheter is very important because this catheter's job is to measure electrical activity of the diaphragm. So you'll see EA little d little i okay and when you see that in regards to nava what you're talking about is electrical activity of the diaphragm this transesophageal catheter put at the crew of the diaphragm level is there to measure this electrical activity okay essentially the greater the sense of electrical activity the greater the support from the machine Okay, and it adjusts with each breath, so you're going to have varying pressures, okay, associated with the amount of support coming from the ventilator based off of the, electro, like, the electrical activity being sensed from this transesophageal catheter. Okay, so that's basically how it works. Okay, now when you talk about um, getting into understanding the trigger and the cycles of the mode of NAVA. That's always important, okay? So you see I got trigger and cycle here, and then I got one, two, three, and that's because there's actually, in that order, one, two, three different triggers in three different cycles, okay? They, they're not always in play. This is trigger and cycle number one, which is the preferred method, which is way the, the, the mode is set up to function, if that doesn't work, you have trigger cycle number two. If that doesn't work, you have trigger cycle number three. Okay, so it's actually very, um, it's built in with very safety with with various safety mechanisms to um, 
not allow for, um, let's say, electrical activity of the diaphragm is not detected, then the vent does nothing because that's its first trigger. Its first trigger is that when the diaphragm, uh, based off of diaphragm, excitation is what you'll see in the literature, the electrical activity of the diaphragm functioning, you will see that that triggers the breath, okay? And then as that electrical activity of the diaphragm diminishes to 40 to 70% of the peak electrical activity of the diaphragm, then that will tell the uh, ventilator to cease inhalation and open the expiratory valve, okay? That's the way it's designed to work. Now, if by chance the transesophageal catheter is not in proper placement and electrical activity of the diaphragm is not sensed the way it should be, okay, then the backup mechanism is to provide pressure support ventilation, okay, and it does that with a standard flow or trigger pressure, I mean uh, flow or pressure triggering, okay, and it'll give that preset pressure support to the patient, and then the cycle mechanism there for number two, the pressure support, that's the safety mechanism, is that so the patient, so the, so the transesophageal catheter doesn't detect any elect, uh, electrical activity from the diaphragm, but the ventilator still detects spontaneous efforts from the patient. The ventilator says, no problem, I'm going to give you a pressure support ventilation, okay? Pressure support ventilation is triggered by flow or pressure, and it's cycled by a flow decay, typically around 25%, which means when 25% inspiratory flow begins and as it decays to 25% of peak inspiratory flow, then inspiration ends, expiratory valve opens, and the patient exhales, okay? You can, you can change that 25%. It doesn't have to be 25%. I'm just using that as an example, okay? Now, let's say that there's no electrical activity recognized, and let's say there's no spontaneous efforts recognized, then the third trigger and cycle and the third safety mechanism is for NAVA to go into basically pressure control, ventilation, time triggered, I time cycled. Okay, so that's kind of the way the mode works. Um, it's 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 if you look at the research up in it, um, it's actually touted as very successful. Um, the the recognition of the electroactivity in the diaphragm promotes uh, patient synchrony. Now. Obviously, we're talking about mechanically ventilated patients, which puts us into the ballpark of patients who have altered respiratory drives, okay? So excessive sedation being used will alter and depress a patient's respiratory system, their neural system, then obviously this mode is probably not gonna be for them. If you have a patient that's apneic, this mode is probably not for them, okay? Uh, this mode is definitely gonna be used uh, primarily during the weaning phases of mechanical ventilation uh, for most of the patients to enhance that experience and get them off uh, mechanical ventilation quicker because you're promoting more adequate um, patient ventilator synchrony, which is always better for the patient. Okay. Hey, Yancey, I hope this helps. Anybody else, I hope it helps. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you want to see next. I'd love to do it for you. Best wishes.